Hello and welcome back to Spectral Theory in my Functional Analysis series. Now, in today's part 33, we will talk about the spectrum of compact operators. But before we start, I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Please don't forget, as a supporter, you get access to the PDF versions and the quizzes of all the videos. Now today, we talk again about compact operators as we have done it in part 18. Therefore, maybe it's a good thing to recall the definition of a compact operator. So what you always should have in mind is that the notion compact is the first generalization of finiteness. So in this sense, compact operators are very close to linear operators between finite dimensional spaces. Therefore, it's the first extension to go from matrices to infinite dimensional operators. So what we need now are two general norm spaces we call X and Y. And then we consider a linear operator T from X to Y. More precisely, as always, it should be a bounded linear operator. And then T is called compact if it sends bounded sets to almost compact sets. It means that the closure of the image has to be compact. And here you also already know it's sufficient to look at the unit ball V10. Okay, so this is the definition we already know and now let's see what this means for the spectrum. In order to understand this, maybe let's first recall what we know from the finite dimensional space. So we can just take a matrix A where the entries are complex numbers. Now, because we want to talk about the spectrum, the eigenvalues of the matrix, we need a square matrix here. However, please don't forget, such a matrix represents a linear operator from Cn into Cn. It simply works by taking a vector here and apply the matrix A from the left hand side. And then, of course, what we get is a well defined bounded linear operator. And indeed, obviously, it's also compact by the definition above. Okay, then the question is, what do we know about the spectrum of this operator we also call A now? First of all, we know the spectrum only consists of eigenvalues, namely finitely many. So we could call them lambda1, lambda2 until lambda k, and we also know this can't be an empty set. But of course, it's possible that we only have one eigenvalue here. Moreover, we know we can also look at the eigenspaces, which is given by the kernel of A minus lambda j times the identity. In short, as always, we just write A minus lambda j. Of course, here all the eigenspaces are finite dimensional spaces by definition, but in general, for bounded linear operators in an infinite dimensional space, they could be infinite dimensional as well. However, maybe it still holds that the eigenspaces are finite dimensional for compact operators, because they are very close to matrices. Indeed, we will see that soon and maybe let's summarize all the facts in a proposition. So in general, what is the spectrum of a compact operator? Hence, what we need now is one complete norm space, a Banach space X. And then we take an operator t from x to x and this one should be a compact one. Okay, and then let's talk about the spectrum of this operator. First of all, we can't conserve the property that the spectrum is a finite set. However, the next step while going to infinity would be a countable set. And in fact, this is what we have in general for a compact operator. Of course, by the things we said before, it's still possible that this countable set is still finite. This can even happen in the case that X is an infinite dimensional space. However, in this case, something special happens for compact operators. More precisely, we know that we have infinitely many directions that are sent to one compact set. And this implies that zero is always an element of the spectrum. So this is what you can remember and you see it's a difference from the finite dimensional case. Therefore, the natural question is, what can we say about the spectrum of T without zero? Now, of course, 
This is still a countable set, but now this one could be empty. However, it could also be a countable infinite set, which means it could be written as a sequence of values lambda. But similarly to the finite case here, it does not happen that this infinite case here has an accumulation point. More precisely, this means if you form the closure of this set in C, the only point that could join is this zero here. In other words, you could say the sequence lambda k converges to zero. So you see, this is an important property of the spectrum of a compact operator. Moreover, in fact, what we can conserve from the finite dimensional case is that these points here are in fact eigenvalues. So we don't know if zero is an eigenvalue, but all the other points are. So in other words, such a point lambda here lies in the point spectrum of T. So this is a good thing, because it means for compact operators, you can still work with eigenvectors. Moreover, as I said before, the corresponding eigenspaces are still finite dimensional. So in this regard, you see the spectrum here is very similar to the spectrum of a matrix. However, of course, we could have infinitely many eigenvalues and eigenspaces. And on the other hand, it could happen that zero is an eigenvalue with an eigenspace that is infinite dimensional. But of course, it could also happen that zero is not in the point spectrum at all. Okay, then in summary, I would say this proposition here is very important to remember. Indeed, the proof is a lot of work, therefore this will be a topic for another video. However, for this video here, we can look at an example. A good example would be when we take the L2 space as our Banner space. This is a Hilbert space and we will work with these in the next video. However, first here we look at an example of a compact operator T. And indeed, it's not so complicated to find one, we just define Tx to be the sequence 1 over j times xj. Now of course, this is a well-defined linear and bounded operator, but also compact. Now, in order to see this, you have to look at the image of the unit ball under T. And then we can show that this image is contained in a set given by all the vectors y in L2 that fulfill that the absolute value of yj, so the jth component of y, is less or equal than 1 over j. Now indeed, this is not hard to show at all, it immediately comes out of the definition of the operator and the unit ball. So maybe that's a thing you can check for yourself. However, now this right hand side here is a very famous set, it's the Hilbert cube. In fact, it's famous because it's an infinite dimensional cube that is still compact. In other words, it's not so hard to show that this is a compact set in L2n. However, this means the right hand side is a closed set and therefore if we form the closure of the left hand side, it's still contained in the right hand side. And from this we now can conclude that the operator T here is a compact operator. Okay, but now the question is, do we know the spectrum of this operator? And maybe there it's helpful that you could rewrite the operator as an infinite dimensional matrix. Then we immediately see that all the values are zero with the exception of the diagonal. So first we have 1 over 1, then comes 1 over 2, then 1 over 3, 1 over 4 and so on. And then it's not hard to see that all the numbers here on the diagonal are actually eigenvalues. There you can recall that we have done a similar thing in part 29. Indeed we see that ek is the corresponding eigenvector to the eigenvalue 1 over k. Moreover we also see that the eigenspace should be one dimensional. Of course from before we know it should be finite dimensional but here we see it's also one dimensional. Okay and then we see this is the spectrum with eigenvalues and the sequence converges to zero. So this is what we know from before. If we have infinitely many eigenvalues, the sequence has to converge to zero. 
In other words, we can immediately write down the spectrum of this operator. So we simply have the eigenvalues and zero. And indeed, in this case, we see this one is the point spectrum and zero is the continuous spectrum. However, of course, you see this was an easy example because the operator t was given in this diagonal structure. This is something that is also easy to deal with when you have matrices. Therefore, you might recall from linear algebra that diagonalization is an important tool to deal with other matrices. And indeed, we can do a similar thing for compact operators. However, this will be the topic for the next video. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye.